How would you like to combine rearrangements with spectroscopy? That's what we get with McLafferty rearrangement. Um, that's why we're leaving it as kind of the icing on the cake at the end. Uh, when you feel like you've understood the rest of the material thus far, this is the one to cover next. McLafferty rearrangement is really important to consider if you have an aldehyde or ketone present. So if you have any hint that an aldehyde or ketone is part of your structure, look for evidence of the McLafferty re rearrangement to fully understand your mass spectrum. So a McLafferty rearrangement um, is when a keto group, so let's use that definition here and then we'll see what that means. Keto group, so it could be an aldehyde or ketone. Other things too, actually, but that's our most common. Um, undergoes beta cleavage. So it means it cuts the bond between alpha beta. And as it does that, it picks up a gamma H. Gamma, yes, H. So let's write that in. So you see that gamma H is already kind of highlighted for you right here. So if this is your carbonyl carbon, this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon, this is the gamma carbon. And that, as long as the gamma carbon has a gamma H, just has to have one, see how notice it's in red. So that's another feature, must have one, at least anyway, gamma H. So if you have a, gamma carbon and it has a gamma H on it. Notice how it would originally look linear. You know, this uh, this is the butanal, also known as butyraldehyde. So one, two, three, four carbons. You would normally draw it like that, but you can twist it around so that when you bend this one up, you see that there's a six membered uh, transition state as you push these arrows, right? And so notice that if we do an, a, a cleavage at the beta position, that means right here, those arrows are showing that, that the, the alpha beta bond is breaking while the gamma H is being picked up by the carbonyl um, pi bond electrons. So these electrons leave this bond to pick up the H. So carbon's now electron deficient, but that is fixed by cleaving the alpha beta bond to make a alkene. So, so far we have an OH and an alkene. That's an enol. That's this piece here. And you have your alkene here. How did that alkene form between the two green ones? So the color coding shows the green pieces is he are here that become an alkene and those arrows prove that because as the H is released, the electrons stay behind and, you know, you basically do an elimination of sorts here with whereas the leaving group is actually this carbon-carbon uh, bond. So these are the pieces and then they are detected in the mass spec only if they're charged. So remember the neutral piece we don't see, but we see the loss of it. So you might see a prominent peak at 44, but you might also see a peak at 28. Um, so it just depends on which one got the cation. And oftentimes that'll even be the base peak. So that'll be very helpful to know what's going on in your mass spec. If you see a mysterious base peak, but you also know you have a key turn aldehyde, check out what the La McLafferty rearrangement masses would give you, and that would solve the mystery. So for example, what would that look like in the mass spec? Here's butanol. Notice that it has, we're gonna look at the fragmentation uh, more carefully, so we're not honing in on the M plus region, but it has a mass of 72, and so you could see the M plus peak at 72. Now, 72 is our parent peak, parent ion, but notice our base peak is over here at 44. Look at this easy math that was done. If you know that you have a mass at 44, well, what did you, that's less than our M plus peak. If it is less than our M plus peak, we must have lost something. What did we lose? You do the subtraction to find out. 72 minus 44 is a difference of 28. So that means if we took 72, our, our parent ion, and took 28 away from it, we get 44, right? Simple math, but it's easy to reverse what your logic was going to be, so kind of keep track of that. So who was the 28? Let's go back to the structures. Who's the 28 that we lost? Notice that is the mass of ethylene, All right? And the big peak at 44, that is the mass of 
the enol. Now here's where you just have to be careful. It's not, you don't, you can't memorize these numbers necessarily. 44 is a useful number simply because all aldehydes that have a gamma H will have a 44. So notice that part is not variable with aldehydes, but if you have a ketone that changes that mass because that would be replacing this H with a different group and then it would no longer be 44. But as long as you have an aldehyde, so let's say we have um, you know, a simple aldehyde with not a lot of R groups branching off and then you work your way out um, this part might be variable because it could be a longer chain, so you might not guarantee a loss of 28, but you at least guarantee um, 44 is really common unless these are one of these is also in our group. So 44 is very common for aldehydes. So that's a base peak even um, many times, but not guaranteed. Okay, So only for aldehydes, but ketones will have a different mass than 44. Okay. What do these other numbers come from? So we know, let's, let's label what we've seen so far. The base peak is the enol. What is this 57? Well, we need to reason through that. And the way to do that is to think about the different ways you can literally cut apart the molecule. So one thing you could do is take your original molecule, draw the parent ion, M over Z72, and start thinking of different ways you can cleave it. It doesn't have to always be McLafferty because that's only gonna explain one peak, maybe two, but you need to explain the others sometimes. So um, if we wanna be able to explain all the peaks in this mass spec, we're gonna think of all the different ways we can cut this up. So 29 we know is actually the mass of a methyl, I mean, excuse me, an ethyl, CH2 plus CH3. Um, but if we cut here, we also get 29 and look at that's actually resonance stabilized. So that's much more likely to be your 29 peak that we have over here. So I'm gonna bring this down and notice that 29 matches with that one. That is a loss of 43. That means you could write on here M minus 43, right? So 72, in other words, 72 minus 43 equals 29, right? So propyl is a mass of 43. So that explains what happened there. Do we have um, a 43 on there? Yeah, it's just not the base peak. So you notice the one is, there's actually one right there. So we do actually see this cation as well. We see the 43. I like to look for both. Once I know I found one evidence of a piece, I like to switch the radical and the cation and say, well, we could also have the other one, even if it's less common, but notice that it's even taller. So I'm gonna write that there. 43 is probably propyl. Although realistically, this is a better cation with the resonance. So this could account for um, other overlapping peaks. Now, what else could we do? To, so that's cutting it here. Notice that's, that's actually very um, technical notation to indicate that's where you are doing your fragmentation. So that's a fragmentation notation. And so this is cutting here. So losing the methyl from the rest of the group. So if a methyl weighs 12 plus three. So this is a M over Z of 15. And so M minus 15 would be the rest of this. Happens to be equal, so you have to do the math. 72 minus 15 is 57. So the 57 will show us that we have, let's see, where did it go? Here it is, there's our 57. Stabilized cation. So there's that explains our 57. It's a resonance stabilized uh, carbocation. Okay, because you could have the keto can also have the enol form. So just notice it was a ketone, uh, uh, aldehyde in the keto form. It can also sh show the e enol form, and when it does that, you can actually delocalize it. So that's why it has a reasonably prominent peak in the mass spec. And then we also, of course, showed the McLafferty rearrangement. 72 gave us our base peak of 44 plus loss of 28, right? So that was the first thing we looked at at the top. So that explains, that's a fragmentation analysis right there. That's how you explain each of the peaks. We've explained every single one now. So this is from McLafferty. I'm gonna put this mass spec back down. The 44 is from McLafferty, right? 57 was from that stabilized uh, enol, right? So it's M minus 15. And the M plus is the parent ion. 
sometimes these are called daughter ions, by the way. So it's the name that's stuck. But that's um, that's the McLafferty. And the simplest case, to be honest, because it's a straight chain aldehyde, it's possible to have others. So you should really notice it if you see 44 um, and those pieces you could easily cut apart. But we're gonna do one more um, where we're gonna evaluate whether McLafferty would happen or not, and we're gonna do a ketone. So butanone. So it's drawn out, ready to fragment for you, showing the predicted fragmentation patterns. And notice that, you know, what I would do, it's all typed right there, but what you do is say, okay, well, we know the psyllium ion's a good ion, so we could do that. And so we're not even looking at the mass spec yet, we're just kind of predicting. We know that's a good ion, so we do that, and we say, well, that means we lose 43 over this way. And we know what an ethyl weighs, it's 29. So right here, we expect a base peak of 43 for that acillium ion. That's what happens when you cleave at that position, um, plus an ethyl radical. And then you might actually see a peak at 29 as well, but the acillium ion is clearly the more dominant one. So in other words, this side gets the cation, this one doesn't most of the time. So you'd see a taller peak here than you would here. Now, what if we went to the other side? Because we know acillium is stable, we can make the equivalent version with the ethyl group attached. It does make an acillium ion, it's just not the one with the methyl that we're used to seeing. And so it doesn't have a mass you'd recognize right off the bat. 43 we see a lot because that's an acetyl group that has been uh, cleaved from a molecule. But if so let's make this longer R group, we don't know the mass anymore. So in other words, if we cut from here, so I'll do that over here. So versus, this is how you'd write that out that way, you just turn that around and cut the whole piece the other way. So we know that those are two very stabilized pieces for ketones, is to include the acillium ion both ways. So acillium on the left, acillium on the right, okay? So this acillium with the bigger R group happens to weigh 57. So that's what you need to do if you have a ketone is make sure you've tried both sides. With an aldehyde, you only have one side, so you're not gonna see that as much. That's why you get the McLafferty. Is a McLafferty possible? So we have carbonyl, alpha, beta, no gamma. So no McLafferty possible. So I'll write that down. Alpha, beta, no gamma. So no funny business with the mass spec. It should actually be more straightforward. McLafferty is just a way to explain the less obvious ones. Now look at there. There's our 43. There's our acillium. All right? because that's an M minus, if you take 72 from it, you'll notice that you lost 29. So that's the um, only the acillium left at that point. But we did have the other acillium. So I'm gonna call this acillium number one, acillium number two. So let's number them here. Number one, number two. And then of course our parent ion. Those are by far the most important ones to get out of the mass spec. We see our 29 wasn't even labeled here, but if you want, you can, because we know that that's our ethyl radical, um, our ethyl cation. And we don't even see a 15, because those are really unstable radicals, so they're less likely to form, but um, in this one, we don't happen to see one. Okay, so I hope um, you can practice some fragmentation. It takes a little practice to get the hang of it, even though it looks simple, I'm doing subtraction math <laughs> and assigning things after they've just been pulled apart. Um, but for some reason, it could be easy to kind of lose your footing with the logic of it if you don't try to do it yourself. So go try to solve some problems and um, have fun with it.